Okay, welcome, visually gifted. Let's do some Toxoplasma Gondi. So you may have seen Tox, you may have seen the Gondi drawing I had with the torch's infection. Of course, he's the one that carries the torch in that drawing. Um, but what are some of the details about this this, this Toxoplasma Gondi infection? Um, so you can see with this picture, we have a toxic Gandhi, the toxic symbol here. Here's Gandhi. His glasses are a little funny here in this picture. He's got red red lenses. Someone's dropped a bone on his head. Ouch. And this this branch is dripping water on this cat's head. You know, cats hate water. There's a fork on the ground. And there's a blueberry muffin. Yum. So T. Gandhi um, is an, an obligate intracellular per, uh, protozoan parasite and it causes toxoplasmosis. Um, some of the, the symptoms or effects of toxoplasmosis might be chorioretinitis, which is an inflammation of the choroid and retina, which leaves you sensitive to light, um, potentially having an excess of tear, tears or tearing floating black spots in the visual field. So you see the red glasses reminds us chorioretinitis or some sort of visual or, or um, orbital pathology involved with toxoplasmosis gondi. The water dripping on the cat's head is a reminder that head hydrocephalus, or water on the brain as it's formerly called, can develop with toxoplasma gondi infections which is why it's important that pregnant people avoid cats and specifically cat litter or cat feces because it is a vector for Toxoplasma gondi. Blueberry muffin. So in worst case where a child is born with this um, infection, the child may present with a, or, or the um, baby may present with a blueberry muffin rash which is basically a rash that kind of looks a little bluish, a little, um, a little like a blueberry muffin. What else can I say? Um, so you saw the cat from cat feces and also from um, uncooked meat. Um, it's kind of interesting to note that um, rodents infected with um, Toxoplasma gondii have a behavioral change in a way that causes them to be hunted more easily by cats. So they, have, they sort of develop less of an aversion to these feline indicators, which cause them to be hunted by cats more easily. And this also can provide a hint to the psychological pathology that is noted in humans. Um, maternally, the um, infection is usually asymptomatic. So the bone falling on the head is a reminder of intracranial calcifications. Um, another infection that you may see um, in intracranial calcification often is a CMV infection. Um, I will have a video on that as part of the Hateful Eight um, picture. The fork on the ground represents an antibody, and I use this generally when there is um, something that specifically affects immunocompromised people. Fork on the ground, or maybe a leaf on the ground, it's another symbol I like to use. Um, it represents being immunocompromised. So T. Gandhi especially infects fetuses and the immunocompromised. Let's try and apply this with question. The best friend was just diagnosed with HIV. As such, you suggest she be tested for T. Gandhi latent infection. The immunoglobulin results come back negative. Whew. She's relieved, but asks you how she could avoid coming across the protozoan. What kind of advice do you give her? All right, so in your head, you might think, oh, T. Gandhi, oh yeah, Gandhi pets a cat. Avoid cat feces, right? So avoid cat feces, um, but she's a cat person, so the best thing would be to avoid changing the litter might be your job to do that from now on. Um, keeping away from strays, of course, and avoiding meat that is often under-regulated and thus undercooked, such as street vendors or restaurants in foreign places without maybe the rigorous standards.
that we like to think we have here in the U.S. Um, that's all for today. Thanks for joining me on Toxoplasma Gone Deep. Have a nice day.